Okay, I think I'm live. I've had so many issues, um, but we're gonna get started. Um, so what I wanna do now is I wanna talk about um, what's been happening in Rosemont in the last two years since Kanika's um, death that happened there. Um, so if you don't remember this guy, he is the mayor of the village. And let me see. This is Brad. So I did a video on Brad uh, maybe a year ago, and we talked about the fact that Brad was the main person who was able to tell the FBI not to get involved, and then the FBI just sort of dropped it there. And a lot of us were wondering, you know, who is this guy, and how does he have so much power to tell the FBI to just not get involved? involved. Um, we know our FBI, our FBI is usually overly involved and they usually um, don't have any problem um, interfering. Oh my goodness, they're saying this page is unresponsive. So I don't want to leave the page because they've been trying to kick me off of this um, off of this article and if they do it so many times, then they can block me and say that I have to pay. So, um, you know, I'm going to drop the link and, you know, just keep that in mind. If you really want to, you know, keep the article, you should just print it like the first time that you go in there. So, um, so he was the person that told the FBI to go away, not to get involved. They didn't get involved. He was also the person who slipped up on camera and said that the FBI was involved and that they were helping with the investigation. So he's kind of a, a, a sneaky character. He's also the person that Jedediah went to on the first day that he found out that this had happened. And Jedediah Brown, of course, is um, the one of the first protesters that was on the scene on the ground over there in Rosemont. How did he know to go directly to the mayor's office? I have no idea. But... Um, that's actually when I found out about the cases when he was, uh, Jedediah was doing his live video, um, wanting to talk to the mayor and they were giving him the runarounds in the office saying that he was in a meeting and this and that and you couldn't talk to him, asking him to leave, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and I also did another video separately showing that this man's office okay, the Rosemont Village has the same address as the illegal organ traffickers. And I'll drop that video um, in the description because that is important. Um, if you go on the FBI's website right now and you type in Rosemont, you'll see um, that the FBI is still looking for information um, related to the illegal organs that they found in a warehouse in Rosemont. And one of the main companies that they're investigating shares an address with him. Okay. So um, he does have ties to illegal organ trafficking. He does have ties to the FBI. Um, this is the same family that, of course, we talked about runs the village of Rosemont. His father founded it um, I think like 50 years ago and created this commercial enterprise um, and he's since taken over and you'll see in the article that he's grooming his son to take over the village after him. So we're going to get into this article and see what has been happening and what's been up with him, um, since we last left off. So this article is from the Chicago Sun Times and hold on, let me make sure that there's no issues. Give me one second. Okay, so I think we're good. If there's any issues, um, just let me know. So this article is from the Chicago Sun-Times and the headline is interesting. It says, Dynasty, Chicago's own political soap opera 
adds new plot line with Rosemont's mayor Springfield dreams. Okay, and that would translate into there being no state representative quite like Brad Steffens, whose influence in Springfield would be magnified far beyond that of any first typical first term lawmaker. Okay, so this small town village mayor has uh, become a lawmaker in Illinois, basically. So let's read this. It says, Rosemont Mayor Brad Steffens, the current face of one Republican political dynasty, is taking steps to succeed another in a move that would instantly make him one of the most intriguing figures in Illinois' politics. Steffens says he's giving serious is consideration to filling the vacancy created by the recent resignation of state representative Michael, hmm, the only Chicago Republican in the Illinois House. And while it's not a done deal yet, Stephens makes clear for the most part I'm in. And this article was in June. And so since then he's in. So just so you know, um, should he win the appointment, Stephens says he would hold both offices at once. A rare double dip that is apparently allowed under Illinois law. Bridgeview Mayor Stephen Landick, a Democrat, has doubled as a state senator since 2011. Okay, so he's not going to give up um, control of the village. He's going to run the village and he's going to be a lawmaker. Now, if you know anything about law and politics, you know that there has to be checks and balances. And even though this is technically allowed under uh, state law for Illinois, this is completely unethical that you would have somebody um, basically policing themselves. Okay, so if you have any problem with Rosemont, you go to the state and guess who's on the state? The mayor of Rosemont. You see how that's a conflict right there? Okay, so let's keep reading. But there's no other town in Illinois quite like Rosemont, the puny village of 4,000 people near the O'Hare airport that punches like a heavyweight in the political world because of its unique role as a government controlled economic engine fueled by its convention, entertainment, and more recently, retail offerings. Okay, so let's not let that go over our heads, okay? Rosemont is a heavyweight in the political world because of its unique role as a government-controlled economic engine. Now, that stands out to me, um, especially as it relates to Kanika, because it adds context to where she was found deceased. Not only was she found deceased in a commercial kitchen in a, uh, you know, three, four star hotel, um, but she's found in a unique government controlled economic engine. Okay. And this also adds to a reason as to why they would want to cover this up. Okay. Let's continue. And that would translate into there being no state representative quite like Stevens, whose influence in Springfield would be magnified far beyond that of any typical first term lawmaker. And this person saying he's not saying it's good or bad, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this man makes 69000 with the state salary, and he's going to make 260000 from Rosemont. Now, anybody with the brain knows that if there's any conflict between Rosemont and the state, who is he going to side with? The village that his daddy built that's paying him $260,000 a year. Okay. This is the money that we know about. We know rich people hide money all the time. Um, so it says that he's 56, et cetera, et cetera. This talks about, I'm going to drop the link to the article, but this talks about his, um, ties to the Republican party. And, um, basically this guy's leaving. So he's going to slip in and they're thinking that by him already being in that position, it's going to be easier 
when the people actually vote in 2020 for him to hold that seat. And then down here, it talks about his father founding the village 51 years ago. Um, <clears throat> and this is also important. When it comes to Rosemont, he said, we, we run it like a business. Okay. So, um, Okay, so there's another article that I want to read, um, but I think I'll just drop the link to it. The only thing that it has in there is it talks about the fact that this little village sends $90 million to the state each year. And the state, uh, in return, sends the village back about $13 million. So this village is not only... Uh, economic engine for um, the Stevens family, but he's also sending a lot of money to the state and, you know, the state has to send a lot of money to the feds. So um, it seems like whatever he wants, um, for the most part, he's paid enough people to make that happen. Now, I want to show you exactly how this relates to Kanika. Um, right now, this is happening only two years after her death, right? Now, when you're in politics, you plan like five, ten years out. So there's a very good chance that he already knew that he was going to want to be a state lawmaker. Now, having a big case like the Kanika Jenkins case, something that went viral, something that took over social media, something that even took over YouTube, whether they want to admit it or not, um, under his leadership or connected to his name or connected to his village would not look good for him. That would definitely be a mark on his report card, right? Um, having his name connected to gangbangers and cover up and illegal organ trafficking, this and that would probably ruin, will most likely ruin his political career because he would have lost confidence um, in the voters, right? So I'm going to show you um, how this happened. Give me one second. I have to, I have to look up this. Um, this press release right quick. Okay, let me just type it in here. And this press release is proof that he was definitely thinking about his reputation, his career, and the reputation of the village when he closed Kanika's case. Okay, this is the um, release that they sent to the public when the case was officially closed. And this is on October 20th. 2017. Okay, so this is the press release. This is a statement from Chief Donald uh, E. Stevens. Um, so I guess this is probably like, wait, it's probably like his son or somebody. Um, but it says, today we're closing the tragic case of Kanika who passed away at the Crown Plaza O'Hare. This statement is a compilation of evidence and includes a vast amount of facts surrounding the case. 
It says the death of any child is tragic, but the death and circumstances surrounding Miss Jenkins are especially sad. Okay. Pay attention, you guys. Before I share with you a timeline of events that occurred in this case, I want to give you a little background on the village of Rosemont. Although we have a population of just over 4,200 residents, we welcome an average of 100,000 visitors a day. With that many guests consistently traveling through Rosemont and or staying with us, there is a high demand for superior public safety services. Pay attention. So this, this is absolutely connected to the death of Kanika Jenkins. This is her press release when they closed the case. And before he tells us about the case, they're saying that we have to protect the village. Let me tell you about the village first. Okay, we have all these people coming in and there's a high demand for superior public safety services. Okay, so they're absolutely thinking about their reputation. Why they didn't put this at the end? Why they didn't put this at the end? This has, I mean, if this has nothing to do with Kanika and there's no politics involved, why they didn't put this at the end? They put this in the beginning for a reason. Okay, and it says the Rosemont Public Safety Department provides outstanding public safety services to include fire, police, and EMS. You can see I'm dyslexic, right? <laughs> okay, so um, now turning to the Kanika Jenkins case. Okay, so what I'm saying is this guy over here and his team of people, this mayor, he definitely had political motives to declare Kanika Jenkins' death an accident. Maybe not necessarily to protect a gang. Maybe he wasn't affiliated with that, but he definitely didn't want to be affiliated with organ trafficking, okay? He definitely didn't want to um, have a case like that under Rosemont's name as far as, you know, gangbangers murdering people in the hotels. You know, he definitely didn't want his officers on the record for, you know, having a girl gone missing and them not even looking for her. So there's a very good chance and it's highly likely that he did this for his own personal gain for his own political motives. For the reputation of Rosemont so that he can move up, so that he can not only, you know, oversee Rosemont, but also he would have firsthand knowledge if there was gonna be, you know, any type of accountability coming down on him because he's at the lawmaker's table. Do you understand? So um, I wanted to definitely put him on blast and keep your eyes open to the types of moves that he's making. I'm gonna definitely you know, keep my eyes on the FBI website to see if they're ever going to solve this illegal organ trafficking that's happening in Rosemont. Um, that's not rumors. That's actually fact. You can go on the FBI website right now and just type in Rosemont. It'll pop up, you know, for you, just like it did for me. Um, the case has been open for some years now. Um, I definitely think that, you know, us, you know, being in the Trump era and having a Republican as president, um, has something to do with it. Um, he's definitely slowed the FBI down and, you know, shit, they have to, half their time is spent investigating him, you know, so um, hopefully, you know, very soon in 2020, we can see some real movement on that issue. Um, but let me see, in case you have any questions about this, I'm going to go, I have another video that I'm going to do. And this video next, we're going to, um, I'm going to take a break because I have a little cold. I need to drink some tea. 
But um, next tonight, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to look up the case. I'm going to show you how to go to the website and how to look up the case. There's two, there's two separate parts. There's a probate and then there's the actual law. And I'm going to show you how to look up both of those case numbers. And then we're going to review those documents. And we're going to um, actually compare what the lawyers have put together to the documents that Rosemont's put together. And then I want to show you something on my phone where Rosemont.com blocked me. <laughs> I was trying to look up some stuff and they had a message like, you're blocked. You need to talk to your network administrator. So let me see. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thanks for checking in. I miss you guys. Okay. So if there's no questions, I'm going to go and um, I'm going to be back soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.